momentous, a decision, a choice, a day, a journey, an action or a change of great significance. Over one year ago, 13 people sat in the living room and dreamed about a church that would help people embrace Jesus Christ in every moment of their life. We have seen that dream become a reality. We have seen people be transformed. We have seen marriages saved and people are coming to life in Jesus Christ. Today is a momentous day where we celebrate all that God has done, all that God is going to do, and what God has in store for you. Welcome to Kairos Church. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. One year celebration of our church, and man, we are so thankful that you're here celebrating it with us. It has been just an amazing, wild ride. If you've been here since the beginning, you know, man, it's been just crazy and wild and adventurous and tiresome, but also extremely rewarding to be able to do the Lord's work. If you're just joining us for the first time, maybe it's today or in the last weeks or last months, what I want to say to you is get ready to hang on because God is moving and we are going to keep following him wherever he takes us. And we, we, we plan on doing that, man, and every single thing that we do. Man, I, I've been thinking a lot over the last couple of weeks uh, just in preparation of this day about Kairos just reminiscing over the last year and, and more about what God uh, has called us to, about what God has doing and has been doing in, in this church and in our lives. Um, and I've, I've kind of just, I stand back and I'm in awe of, of who God is and, and what he's done. So I just, I was thinking a lot about the, the first year and it got me to thinking about uh, celebrating my first child's first birthday. Now, if you, if you are a parent and you had your first child and you got to their first birthday, this was a big deal. This was a big day. You, like, you, you got everything. You threw out all the stops. You got all that you needed to do to make sure that this was the best day for this kid, and they're not even going to remember it. You know what I'm saying? And so we do all this stuff to, to have this day for this kid. And if you don't have children and you've never done this before, I'm sure you have a family member or a friend, and you sat back and you're like, why are they doing all this crazy stuff for this kid, right? He's a child. Anyway, so you get to experience that. And as you celebrate this day, you, you kind of get to this moment where you just begin to think, Man, I have been successful at keeping this tiny human being alive for a whole year. Like, that's worth celebrating, right? And so you think about that, how you have arrived as a parent because you kept the baby alive. Um, but then you, you begin to look back uh, at, at all the things that took place, some of the moments where you freaked out, where you're like, I didn't really need to freak out, and now it just seems silly. And there's a lot of moments like that. And, and, and you've watched your, your, your baby roll and crawl and maybe walk and run and climb and, and grow. And you, of course, you captured pictures of every single moment of this child. The first child and the second child, they absolutely get the pictures of every single moment. Now, when it comes to the third child and, and after, it's not so much, right? The third child, you know, you, you pull out the, the, the picture book and you have all these pictures of the first and second child. And the third child is like, hey, where, what about when I, I did that same thing where there's no pictures of me? I don't understand. Am I adopted? Come on, be honest with me. Am I adopted? Because you don't have pictures of me like you have the other kids. And I, I speak from experience being the third child. Um, and there are pictures of my brother and sister, but not of me. Thanks, Mom. I appreciate that. Yeah, she's here. She knows what she did to me. Um, anyway, uh, moving, moving back to this. So, you know, we, we have this, this day, this, this celebration of this child. And we do all these things. And then we come to this moment where we're going to allow them to experience a sugary carb coma, right? Because we give them their very own cake. And we set it in front of them. And if they hadn't had cake up to this moment, they take that first bite and their eyes get real big and dilated, right? And they look around. And you look away and you look back and the cake is gone. And it's not all in them. It's everywhere. It's on the floor. It's on the tray. It's in their hair. It's in their diaper. And, and it, it's, it's amazing. You know, as I was just thinking about all that, and I, I, that's what it is like for Kairos. And from conception to, to the pregnancy to the birth, we... We've watched our baby church, man, roll and crawl and walk to then running and climbing and growing. It, it's been a, a phenomenal story and journey that we have been on. And today, guess what? We all get to stuff our faces and have a sugary carb coma of our own because we got cake after this to celebrate. Now, here's the thing. Our church, it survived, right? 
Our church is alive, it's breathing and active, and man, it feels so good to not have killed something. You know what I'm saying? Like, that just makes you feel good inside. So accomplished that we didn't put this thing to death. But so we, we, we come to this moment, right? Whether it, it's with today with our church or in that moment with our child and their first birthday, and we realize that, that today, this momentous day that we're celebrating is just the first of many. It's still just the beginning. There are more milestones. There, there are, is more growth. There is more cake to stuff our faces with moving forward. I wonder if you ever, if you have, if you have, if you're a parent, if you have kids, you ever just looked at one of your kids, probably the good one, and said, "Man, how did I get so blessed with this kid?" It's got to be the good one. The bad one, you're like, eh, we'll work on him later. Uh, or her. I'm not going to point any fingers. It could be both. Um, but you, you just look at your child and you're like, man, God blessed me with this. How, 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 how am I the parent of, this, of these amazing kids? And as I, I look at Kairos and I look at what we've been able to do, I'm just so beyond blessed. Man, that God, man, gave, gave me and my wife a vision for this church. I'm beyond blessed that God chose us to be a part of what God is doing in this community. You know, on January 8th of 2017, 13 people sat in my living room and they heard about the plans and the vision to to, to plan a church. And that day, they committed to making today a reality. And what I know is that momentous day, it led to to many more. And from 13 people, we, we rolled over to 30. And then we crawled to 40 and then 50 and then we walked to 60 and then finally... On October 15, 2017, Kairos Church launched, and it was just an amazing day. And since then, we've grown, and, we've, and, and today we have over 200 people in attendance, and over 100 people have given their life to Jesus in just one year. Man, our church, yeah, the, in the toddler stages of our church, God is accomplishing amazing things. And see, during our series, Momentous, that we're kicking off today, what I want to do is I, w- I want to talk about the vision of our church and, and, and everything that we believe, but I also want to share stories, stories from, from people, man, uh, of, of change and transformation that have taken place because they heard about Kairos, they were invited to Kairos, and they, they came here and they experienced and embraced Jesus in their life. I've asked a handful of people to share their story, and I've, I've listened, and, and they're amazing stories. I want to share those with you, but I also want to challenge all of us. To continue, man, just taking and making momentous decisions, taking momentous action and experiencing momentous change personally, right, in our own life with Jesus, but also collectively as a church. And and, and what I want to do is I want to hear from you. I've asked some other people to share their story, but I know each and every one of you has your own story, your own Kairos story, and I would love to hear it. I would love to share it. So here's my challenge today and the remainder of this series, I would challenge you. Go on Facebook, go on Instagram, go on whatever social media platform you prefer, or write me a letter. I don't care what you do. Share your story. Because your momentous day, your momentous journey, it's meant to be told. It's it's meant to inspire people. It's meant to help others experience a momentous day for themselves. Now, before I get into how we can do that and how we can continue to do that as a church to help people have a momentous day... I wanted to share some wins with you guys, just some, some things that have happened over the past year that are just God-only moments. You guys cool with that? You want to hear some cool things that God has been doing number-wise? Yeah? Cool, because otherwise I wasn't going to share it. So hopefully you really do and weren't just doing that because I coaxed you into saying you wanted to. Anyway, so let's, let's talk about some numbers here um, that God has been doing. You can put that, that first image up on the screen. And So what you're seeing here is kind of where we started. Uh, last year, uh, you know, right around launch time, four to five weeks after launch, these are the averages. We, we, we were averaging 95 total attendance. Today, we are averaging 211 people in attendance every single Sunday, 211. And so um, the, the kids, uh, we have had, we had, we're averaging 25. Um, you can go to the next image, guys, by the way. There you go, 211. Kids, we were averaging 25. And, and today we have 68 kids on average every single week. That's more than triple. That's amazing right there. That's awesome. Uh, and then adults, we were averaging 70 adults. Now we are averaging 144 adults every single Sunday. This, these are awesome numbers. Moment makers, these are our volunteers that serve every single weekend. Last year, 30. This year, 90. 90 moment makers every single week. 
And these are awesome numbers, and, and what God is doing is amazing. But the best number is the number of salvation and the number of people who've embraced Jesus in their life. Over the last year, 139 people have given their life to Jesus Christ. 139. And that's just phenomenal. I'm going to share kind of how phenomenal that is in just a minute. But the other number is our baptisms. We've had 29 people follow that up with baptism. I mean, God, God is working. And these are momentous days and momentous decisions and momentous action. Kairos Church has doubled in every area, more than doubled in some areas. And that is something that we will celebrate and continue to celebrate what God is doing. And here's what it means. If Kairos continues to grow and if God continues to move, this is what it's going to look like next year when we celebrate our second year. 420 total attendance, 280 adults, 140 kids, 180 moment makers, and 280 salvations. That's huge for a church to be able to accomplish those things. And maybe you're like, I don't, I don't know how huge, I want to help you understand how huge this is for a church in our community to be experiencing right here in year one. You can go to the next slide. I want to share some healthy church, church metrics with you. They did a poll of about 300,000 churches in America, and 60% of them are 200 and under. What you need to know is that the 200 barrier for attendance is one of the toughest barriers for churches to get past. Oh, and, and it's one of those things that you've got to strive for and go after and continue to go after until you make it there. And I, I'm not here to dog or talk about small churches. What I'm saying is we are a church that is striving to grow and to help as many people as possible. And in one year's time, we are over 200 in attendance. We are over that 60% mark. And that's, that's huge. It's a huge thing to celebrate. First time guests, what we call our, our VIPs. Weekly average for a growing church is five. Our church sees on average 12 every single week. We're growing, we're thriving, we're, we're healthy. Volunteer average is 57% of the congregation. This is for a healthy growing church. Kairos is moment makers, we're at 62%. Our, our volunteer culture is top notch. Our moment makers are amazing, and it's a testament to what, to what God is doing because each of us are, are doing our part, are willing to get involved in the things that God is calling us to. Now, the last thing is this, salvations per year. If you were to average 100 adults during a year, you would, it would be 12 salvations in one year. We're averaging 14 or 144 um, adults. It's wrong there. It's 144 average adults, and guess what? Our, we should be at 15 salvations, right? But we have had over 100 salvations in one year's time. Like, it is a huge thing that God is doing. It's, it's more than us. It's beyond us. And it's something we always want to celebrate. Now, here's what I know because of what we've seen. And what we've seen God do in the last year, we believe that every single Sunday will be someone's momentous day where they will embrace Jesus in their life. And so that's what I want to continue talking about is momentous. Now, there'll be a definition up on the screen, and momentous is, is a change, a decision, an event, a journey of, of great significance or importance. One of the things we, we share in our Moment Maker training uh, once a month is something we call the certain day principle. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share it with you, and um, we love it. It's, it's a part of our culture. We believe that, man, every day, every Sunday is someone's certain day where they're going to meet Jesus. So we teach that, and as I was getting ready for this series and thinking about momentous and what it means, I, I began to realize that, man, this is, this is a momentous day for someone. So today, we're going to look at this principle in Luke chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 17. Here's what it says. It'll be on the screens for you guys. It says, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching, this is Jesus, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven you. Verse 24 says, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. 
Immediately the man rose up before them, took what he had been lying on, and departed in his, to his own home, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and they were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things here today. This is a picture of what church should look like. And I am proud to say that this is a picture of what Kairos does every single week. Let me just break it down for you what's going on here. We know that Jesus is teaching. Right? He's teaching about God. He's teaching about following God, about loving him and loving others. Every single week we teach about Jesus, about who he is, about what it means for us. We teach people about God and about how to saturate their lives with God. So we're teaching about Jesus. We know in this story that it said the power was present to heal them. The Holy Spirit was there. Matthew 18, 20 says this, that where there are two or more gathered in my name, I am with them. We got two or more. The Holy Spirit is here. And because of that, we experience healing. We experience breakthrough, salvation, and momentous days are happening. So that's taking place. The other thing we, we see in this passage of scripture, that this place where Jesus was, it was packed. And it was wall to wall. It was standing room only. The people had spilled out into the street, these four men. They just wanted to bring their friend to get healing, and they couldn't. And so they had to make their own way and go up on the rooftop to get to Jesus. Man, the place was packed. They heard about Jesus, and they came to experience Jesus for themselves. You see, people, man, people hear about what God is doing at Kairos and should continue to hear about what people, what God is doing in people's lives through Kairos and want to know what's going on. And want to know why? Who is this Jesus? What is this life change? Man, you are different because of what you experience, and I want to experience it. And so what we do is we share, and we meet up, and we, we pray, and we invest, and we invite, and people come to experience what Jesus has to offer. Like this paralyzed man, I know every single one of us, there is someone in our lives who is paralyzed. And maybe it's not a physical paralysis, but there are people that are paralyzed by their sin, people that are paralyzed by their shame and their regret and their troubles. You see, as, as Jesus followers, as a church, it's our call to help bring them to Jesus, to help them come with their worries and their pain and their trouble and their regret, to lay it at the feet of Jesus so that they can experience freedom and healing. You see, like their friends, like this man's friends, these four that brought him, this is what we're supposed to look like as a church and as moment makers. We are called to do whatever it takes, to do whatever we can so that God can do what only he can. And that's what took place in this man's life. So that means pushing through the crowd, drowning out the voices, taking down barriers that are keeping people from Jesus. And then when we finally get to him, when our friends, when our family, when people we've invited, they finally enter into the presence of Jesus like this man who is healed and, and saved by our faith, we are saved, we are freed, we are challenged, we are convicted, and we take next steps to be more and more like Jesus every single week. It's by our faith that we rise up from our sin, from our hurt, from our pain, from our regrets, from whatever we are living in, and we come into this place and we leave this place worshiping and praising and glorifying who God is, and we leave saying, oh my goodness, did you see what God did? I, I want to shout it from the rooftops because it was miraculous and it was strange, and I want my friends to experience it, and I want my family to experience it, and I want my coworkers to experience what Jesus has to offer. You see, it's an unwavering desire to see momentous days every Sunday through our faith in Jesus Christ. It's a belief that Jesus, he stepped out of heaven. He left heaven for us. And he, and he sacrificed everything to die on a cross for us. And then he followed God's plan for us. Today, church, man, I would ask you to commit to do whatever it takes to help people embrace Jesus in their life. Did you see a momentous day? It happens when we sacrifice everything that we've known just like Jesus. When we step out of what we know, when we step out of comfortable just like Jesus. When we're willing to sacrifice what we are, think is important just like Jesus. And when we follow God's plan for us to reach others. Maybe today is your momentous day to embrace Jesus for the first time, to publicly declare your faith through baptism, to step into God's calling. Four people brought one man to Jesus. 
13 people started something that brought hundreds to Jesus. What can 30 do? What can 50 do? What can 100 people do? May today be a day that forever alters the trajectory of our lives. May today be a day that is a catalyst to reaching more people in our community for Jesus.